One of the most useful applications for an Arduino in radio is as the basis of a DDS variable frequency oscillator. Apart from a programmed Arduino, which is the control unit, all you need is a DDS oscillator module, a liquid crystal display and a rotary encoder. Put those together and you'll have a versatile and stable VFO that can be used for a wide range of radio projects. The VFO you see here is based around an AD9850 module. You can get them on eBay for a few dollars. As you can see, it's fairly small. There's pins underneath, so you can easily plug it into another board. That's particularly significant for Arduino, because you can just get a blank shield board and solder it in, and mount the thing on top of your Arduino module. Here's the Arduino board, which acts as the controller for the DDS unit. If you wanted to, you could build your own. You can buy the chips separately and put them on your own board with a crystal, a couple of capacitors, the voltage regulator and one or two other parts. You might be able to save a few dollars and a bit of space that way. This item is a rotary coder, which is effectively the VFO knob. It was actually salvaged out of an old clock radio but you can buy them new. This one has three connections. One is to the earth and the other two are essentially up and down. All that's handled by the logic in the Arduino. And finally, there's the liquid crystal display. This one was salvaged from an old fax machine. There's 16 connections on it and there is a ribbon cable for 14. The last two are usually for the backlight, which I'm not using in this case. That little black thing attached to the end of the ribbon is a 10k pot. That's used for the contrast of the LCD. If you omit it, or have it set wrongly, then you won't see anything. Remember when I mentioned the shield earlier on? Well, here's it in action. The main Arduino board is at the bottom, and the blank shield board on the top. That's just the right size for the DDS module to fit into. Note though, you will need a few jumper leads to connect the connections in the DDS board to the right connections on the Arduino. All this might look a bit involved and there's a fairly steep learning curve. You've got a couple of alternatives. One is to buy a kit or pre-made VFO DDS. If you've just got one project that needs a DDS VFO and don't intend to be building others later on, then you could do a lot worse than buy a DDS kit or unit off the shelf. Such as this one you see here by N3ZI. All the programming's done for you and I found it worked first time. Still want to build your own but are still baffled by a lot of the interconnections and the programming then I suggest starting off with some simple Arduino projects. Leave the DDS VFO until later. The first one, and that's the one that's suggested for Arduino beginners, is the blinking LED. Then I'd suggest moving up a notch or two to something that uses an LCD display, because you'll be using that anyway in the Arduino DDS project. Just about the simplest Arduino project that uses an LCD display is a DC voltmeter. Apart from the Arduino and the display, all it needs is a couple of resistors. Please see the video description for a link to a voltmeter project that I've tried and been very happy with. When you build this and any other Arduino project, I suggest having two copies of the code. The original and then the copy that you might play around with. Even if you don't know about programming, try and change a few things, upload it and see what happens. It may not work, but then you can always go back to the original. Doing anything with Arduino requires you to have the Arduino compiler program, fortunately downloadable for free. You probably got it when you did the flashing LED experiment. After you're happy with the Arduino voltmeter, you might want to have a look at this sketch. A sketch, by the way, is a program in Arduino Talk. All it is, is a single frequency generator. 
it uses the Arduino to drive the AD9850 DDS. If you want to change the frequency, then you have to change the frequency in your sketch and then upload it into the Arduino again. There's no use of the rotary encoder or digital display, so it's effectively a substitute for a crystal, but these days cheaper. If you're really clever, you should be able to arrange it so you can get a variety of frequencies coming out of your AD9850. In this case, selectable by grounding one or more of the inputs of the Arduino. Or you could go for something like a pick, such as what VK5TM has done. He's described on his website various DDS projects, including ones that are effectively a selectable frequency crystal oscillator, but without the expense. The next stage is a real DDS VFO, using both the rotary encoder and the digital display. I recommend the website of AD7C, which has some downloadable code which works very well. Once you've got the VFO going, so you can vary its frequency with the rotary encoder and see what it's putting out on the LCD display, you can do a lot of other things with the code. I started with simple things like changing the tuning rate. You might have more tuning rates or less, or you may vary them, depending on what you want to do. For instance, a receiver intended for general coverage shortwave use might have bigger tuning steps than something intended only for narrowband CW reception. The beauty of Arduino and programmable electronics is all those settings are up to you. Then there was another thing I tried. You might have seen some direct conversion phasing designs that have a VFO that is four times the frequency of your desired frequency of reception. For instance, a 7 MHz receiver would need a local oscillator on 28 MHz. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a DDS that covered 28 MHz but displayed on the LCD 7 MHz? Well, you can with a DDS VFO. All it needs is a bit of programming to change it. I can't claim this is the most elegant method, but I found in the code where the section was to do with driving the LCD display. There were various frequency equations where you had to divide the frequency by a certain amount to get what was on the display. I could see in the code some frequency calculations where you had to divide the incoming frequency by a certain amount to get the appropriate digit on the LCD. All I did was I multiplied that amount by 4. That produced a smaller number which was then displayed on the LCD. That's just one thing that you can do, but there's many others if you want to change the feel and look of a DDS VFO. Another site I'd recommend is that by VKHBN. He took the code from AD7C and improved it so that he could get both upper and lower sideband from a codan transceiver that he was modifying. That worked because the codans had an IF of 1.65 MHz. Depending on whether that was being subtracted or added to, that would flip the sideband. The code in VK8BN sketch was not only useful for the codan. I found it could provide a frequency offset, useful for instance if you're building a CW transceiver. If you're building a direct conversion CW transceiver, then the offset might be less than 1 kHz for the transmit receive difference. But if you're building one that was a superhet, then it would be equal to the IF. Frequency offsets suitable for direct conversion and superhet can both readily be achieved just by changing a few numbers in the program. Now for a bit more detailed description. What you see here is the connections to the Arduino, which is basically the hub of the project. Here's the AD9850, the VFO module. Down here is the LCD. Having a look at the switches, to the left you can see the diagram for the rotary encoder, just three connections. 
Then attached to the A0 connection on the Arduino is a push button switch. Sometimes you'll find that attached to the rotary encoder. So you actually have to push the rotary encoder knob to change functions like the tuning step. Personally, I prefer that in a separate push button switch. And you can see attached to A5 is another push button switch used for another purpose. This video hasn't been very detailed, but I hope I've given you some ideas of where to start. First of all, start with some simple Arduino projects. Then move up to a simple single frequency oscillator using the DDS module. Then add things like the rotary encoder and LCD module. And then finally, mess around with the programming and you'll be able to customize the DDS VFO to whatever project you build.